Maybe 4.30 before they got there, and then I pointed out, you have to understand, they are from a different time zone. 3.30 in the morning is like when they would be reporting to work on a movie location from where they're at. So that was, you know, 5.30, it was, it was their opening of their day, so, and then they didn't realize in, in Ireland, basically it's a 24 hour day city. Mm -hmm. Park City is not, not 24 hours, and neither is Salt Lake City. You know, it's, uh, they're, uh, you, know they're, you don't go drinking after hours in yeah. Utah, but no, they were, they were nice people. God, they were wound up. They were so wound up, we have never been able to figure out whether the elevator they were in broke because they were so happy, or the jumping was done because they were trapped in an elevator, which I actually got trapped in also early. Yeah, so it's like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah. yeah. The jumping or the stopping in the elevator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't quite so rambunctious the next night, but then they still were having a good time in the hot tub. Third night, though, after Snowmageddon, yeah. I, I, I want to go home. Oh. <laughs> well, because it, you know, they had they had their own bus to transfer them back and forth, and they they came back. They were coming back and and in, um, in rented taxis were running, no matter how crappy the snow, but weather was, you know, okay. It was one of the greatest examples of public uh, public security ever done. The snow plows were out before the snow even hit the ground. Not. No, I, I heard them. I heard them on, you know, that no matter what people are telling you, our snow removal people were there before it happened. No, talk to the poor people that were staying with us. So. We had pictures of the whiteout, remember when you were driving? Oh, yeah, home? I've got pictures of me sitting in the car, and I'm going, mm. I'm looking, I got my glasses on. And, and it was a whiteout. Yeah, the only thing you could really out. see were the cars. Yeah. That hadn't been in snow all and, and, and another thing, California drivers don't turn their lights on to drive in bad weather. So, Why? Yeah, because they don't. They don't drive in the rain when it rains here. What happens is when it rains in California, they pull into shopping centers or restaurants and eat. And then when it's done, then they go out and hit other cars because mm -hmm. the road is slick. Mm -hmm. But um, no, but it, it was a unique experience. I mean, we know better. We know that there is Park City and there is Park City. You want to stay within walking distance of the of and the, the downtown, area. Yeah, the downtown area where um, most of the events are going on. Because part of it is off of Main Street. Most of the events all happened off of Main Street. Yeah. The yeah. films were, you had a theater loop. The films went throughout the city, yeah. which is great. And you could park and, and ride on the, the oh, No, I mean, shuttle. it's magnificent. The shuttle system is absolutely brilliant. I mean, that shuttle system went out 14, 15 miles as far as I can figure. But the problem comes is that it, it, the, 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 the parties don't end until real early in the morning. There's only one shuttle that, and it runs until 2 and it stops. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's after 12. Until 12, everything in a place. And I mean, then after that, there's only one that goes on. Yeah, and uh, like I said, we had a problem on, on, on Snowmageddon, which never happened. Which I could, only get with, I could only get within two miles of where a shuttle would let her off. Two miles. I mean, I was... I was stuck on the high, you know, on the great parking lot, one of the largest parking lots you've ever seen in your life on a highway, three times. That's because people that didn't know how to drive in the snow turned their car sideways. I did it once myself. I had, I had, we, had, we had a nice little key. It was really great because I'm going like this down the street. Actually, she saw me a couple of times while I was driving with her. The back end is going like this, and you know, so because we didn't have proper tires for driving in the country. <laughs> yeah. well, we're from California, we don't have snow tires. No, but um, mm -hmm. we, we can tell you in my side of the thing, but I had, because she was, she was doing all the interviewing stuff, I would basically, what I do is I talk to people, I'm setting people, breakfast is a great time to talk to people also, when they have nothing else to do and they're sitting in a place drinking coffee and other stuff or hot chocolate. And we're talking, we had a, some people were massively disappointed at the caliber of films. Yeah. And um, they also said that they had, they, they had gotten away from what Sundance was supposed to be. Okay, let's we'll see, Martin Scorsese, independent film. Peter Jackson, independent when film. When did Martin Scorsese and Peter Jackson, I mean. You know, the Tim Burton, independent mm -hmm. film. You know. Um, Richard Gere, independent film. Debuts of movies for HBO. 
uh, other things, independent film. No, mm -hmm. that's not what they think of an independent film. Is. An independent film is where somebody reaches into his back pocket, pulls out the money to make the movie, and that's an independent film. If you're, if you're spending 30, 40 million dollars on a movie, folks, that's just the same as a studio production. Yeah, I mean, that's doesn't. So, but they thought that uh, they'd been coming for years to Sundance and also to the festival, and they said they were extremely disappointed in the caliber. They said some of, they said the true independent films they liked, they actually didn't like the studio productions. Oh, really? Oh, they, they tanked on every single major production that was there they did not like. And actually, one of the things I discovered is that people come to Sundance for many reasons. There are some people that come purely for the films, yeah. just to see them. There's others that come purely just to party. Yeah. And there's others that mainly come to network. Yeah, and there's also the other, there's the star gawkers, because they really walk right down the street with you. And they're mostly, okay, I didn't see any single major person that didn't, you know, wasn't cordial when you were just, uh, you know, they're, it, it's sort of like a different environment than you would have in Hollywood or one of the other film festivals. These people are, well, first of all, they're cold as hell. And they're basically shivering just like you are. <laughs> and they're walking well, you know, even though there's people that are sitting there, and, and I have seen this because I had frequented the Wire Getty area, yeah. which actually was, which is nice. It's where they did all the filming, and I, um, they did all the, the photos, right? And I figured um, I was sit, standing there waiting for a bit that, you know, most of them would come by there, which is why. Yeah, you know where to, you knew where they were going to be. I mean, it was just. Which um, is why all those people were standing there. Although, you know. Yeah, there's people standing there gawking, but we're not talking like in L.A. No. Standing at maybe 25, 30 people, that's not that many. Yeah, it's got to do with um, the, the difference. It's just, for some reason, Sundance has a different sort of attitude to it in that, uh, the, um, uh, you know, like you walk down the street talking to some guy who would never give you the time of day in Los Angeles, and you're both talking about the weather, and they're not talking films, they're talking about what's going on, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, what's going on in the area, you know, good parties. <coughs> well, that's a popular question for people, you know, you'd think that the people, I think a lot of them though were last minute comers, and they said, you know, it's going to be good parties tonight. Yep. So, and they're all wanting to know what the things are. They're asking you like you're supposed to know. You're asking, you're trying to find out from them. But uh, then, uh, opening night party was nice though. Yep, the day one party. Because the, I, the, the basic, there was a neat thing, opening night party, the day one party. You had a whole string of, of, um, of, of actors and actresses and people come into the, to the thing. Mm -hmm. Then it thinned out and the people came in and then before it closed, Another set of actors and actresses came in. I, mean, I know one time I was trying to get a picture of one of the people, and uh, that was a good party to go yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, there was people there. A guy kept you trying to get the girl to turn around so I get a picture of him, and mm -hmm. she would not turn around. She was the photograph. Everybody in front, everybody in the back wanted a picture. And he finally, you know, he's going to say, "I tried," but no, uh, they, they were nice in there. Uh, um, you know, uh, once again, it was one of those places where everybody. You know, mingled together and it wasn't any different than well, what's unique about Sundance is if you recognize the person, yeah, is you have unusual access that you don't have anywhere else, yeah, uh, because you usually don't have much access. And the, and the venues where the artists were playing were smaller, they're not like LA clubs, there's not a huge spot. Oh, it's... Um, and so, and you're wondering, it's like that's why the guest lists are limited because the places are not that large. Not that big. It's just, yeah. um, I figure here's the problem. My guess is to save the Sundance Film Festival, they're going to have to move from where they're at into a bigger venue, which they do have lots of places that got off a big place. You know, it, and the problem is is that downtown area is dying no matter what they're trying to do because there's not enough parking, there's not enough, uh, uh, you know, the stores aren't big enough. It's just an old, old country place. And as, as it happens, Every old country place dies eventually. I mean, there's businesses that were been closed down for a long time that were open for the first time a year. I mean, it's a, I, I, like I said, I'm, I'm looking at this as Robert Redford's idea of what spring break would be like for middle aged and older people. Yeah. Yeah. He's a skier. He stays to spring break for people that like to go up in, the, in that type of weather. So, I mean, it's, I mean, the whole trick is, you know, would we go back again 
Yeah, we're already planning our trip. <laughs> yeah, but next time we know better. We, we know, know we know a few changes that we would do. For example, like when you bring your warm boots, make sure they have fresh treads and they're waterproof. Yeah, and carry an extra dry set of socks with you all the time. My but, socks are fine. I know. But it was the because one day I wore the shoes shoes with the treads. That was the day we walked up and down the hill so many times that I was really tired. Yeah. But they had like about a two-inch hill. The next day I thought, well, I'm not going to wear the ones with the tread with the heel. So I'm going to actually wasn't thinking with the tread with the heel. I was thinking I'm not wearing the shoes with the tread. I mean, not wearing the ones with the heel. So I wore the flat ones, which I thought would be better because, but the tread tread was wearing, which means I was holding. Actually, it gave me an excuse to hold on to every guy that came around. Yeah. But, um, uh. <laughs> but there is a reason for staying <laughs> close to the center of town. I'm, I, I dropped her off uh, on the day of Snowmageddon, which never happened. I, I got up so I only I only went up maybe in, uh, at the end of where the um, you know to, to where the old town the historic district is, and they were turning people around because you said you had to have four wheel drives are are changed, and that was at the end of the the area, so you couldn't go any further. So that was where you should not have been staying. So you got to stay within walking distance of the area or you're screwed, as yeah. simply put. You know, it's just a lot of people. Well, and here's the other part is you are basically going from, you know, from when I would go, I mean, things didn't start at 10 o'clock. Unfortunately, a lot of them started at noon, but also to get over there or 11, it, you it have to leave earlier. It takes yeah. a while. Because she never got any rest. I mean, flat out, she got no rest. I mean, um, for six straight nights, there was no rest because at the time, because with her, it's, it was about networking and stuff. So she's staying out later at the events, and um, and you know, 